Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be going on to the next steps. We're going to do part two of our rebasing of our Princeton project. I got some figures here that I've rebased on my Warlord Games 40 by 40 bases. Okay, I just want to show the next step uh, on these figures is that each figure, especially metal figures in Perry and Warlord games, every model will have its own base that it stands on. And this base sticks up, you know, a good two or three millimeters above the floor of your maneuver base. So you have a figure base and then you have a unit base. And you can see that there is bumps. So when you go to flock it or paint the base, you're going to have all these bumps underneath each one of these models as if each model is standing on a hill, They're its own personal hill. So we're going to actually go ahead and I'm going to show you a technique that I use using dry decks spackling to prevent this. Okay, so we're going to open this up and you got you can tell I've used quite a bit of this. All right, guys, now what I do is I use a hobby toothpicks that has like a very large end, like a little cup-shaped end, and then has a point on the other end. But what I do is I take a little bit of spackling, right, and I put it down in between the bases. I don't put it on the base itself of the individual model, just in between the model's bases. And I don't concern myself too much with it being because uh, with it being accurate because there's no accuracy when it comes to basing your figures or terrain that your figures are walking on okay so then you get like a a more gentle transition from their base down to the stand you notice how that little chunk sticks up okay i try to get rid of most of the chunks that stick up and kind of give it a a gentle transition instead of this sharp transition from figure base to maneuver base Okay, let me just continue to go on in here. Now, I use dry decks. Usually when it's brand new, this is old. When it's brand new, it's purple, right? And then when it dries, that purple disappears and it turns white. This has a very, very, very light purple tint to it right now. But when it's completely dry, it'll be white. So it's kind of like a visual timer for you to know when your figures are ready to move on to the next step. And it doesn't take that long to dry, really. Once you've got these bases done for a unit, set your unit off to the side, and then it'll take maybe an hour or two, and then they'll be ready for the next step. And you saw when I was cutting these, in the first video, when you saw that I was cutting the figures off, of their bases that I are that I had a lot of plaster on them and that was this that was the dry decks but you can use any wall plaster it doesn't have to be dry decks uh, don't use like rubber caulk make sure it's a it's a it's a plaster okay so now this this figure's got uh, the plaster and now you can see those those individual bumps for their stands have completely disappeared Right, so now we're gonna clean the edges. We're gonna set these figures down and we're gonna let them, let them dry. All right. When I get all four of these bases done with the spackle, I'll be right back. Okay, while I'm spackling the command base, I wanted to make a correction of something that I mentioned on video one. Uh, these are Old Glory 25s, not their 28s. Uh, Old Glory 25s. And 
This is first edition. They, the Old Glory has gone to a second edition, which I think are 28s. They still call them 25s, so I don't know. I don't own any of them. I don't have the second edition figures. Uh, but these cost me $36 for 30 models. Okay, I, I put it up. I put it on the screen, but I was talking like it was $18 for 30 models or something like that. That's just crazy. It was $36 for 30 models, making it just barely over a dollar a figure, which that's pretty good. That's really good when you're talking about 25 millimeter models. And, uh, and they look good. Uh, now the Warlord models, I noticed you get 30 figures for $29, but again, those are plastic. But some advantage of the Warlord figures that I liked is that uh, you get a, a huge variety of posing options because they're assembled models. They are plastic, uh, so you can convert them if you wanted to or something like that. And you have multiple head choices that you can make and you can position their heads the way you want them. And you get a few flags in the box, uh, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, so, and but they are 28s, so they might or might not be compatible with my 25s. Uh, I was comparing some artillery pieces from their line, uh, American War of Independence line, to my uh, Old Glory, and. There's not much difference, maybe a millimeter or two uh, taller. You know, they're supposed to be three millimeters taller, right? But um, it didn't look like three. It looked like one or two millimeters taller, not much taller. Uh, so the models don't look like they're going to have too much of a disparity. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to order more Old Glory or if I'm going to get Warlord or if I'm going to get some Perry models. Uh, I'm still only up in the air to to finish out my regiments for Princeton. Uh, I pretty much figured out exactly how many models I need. I don't need very many British because I, I bought a surplus of British the last time I bought British. Uh, I do need some cavalry and some command figures. But the uh, the Continentals, because Princeton has a lot of variety in their units that participated in the Princeton battle... I need to get about three boxes of Continentals, uh, Militia and Continental Infantry. Uh, but that's okay. That's what I think I'm going to do. All right. I'll be back when I get this last base done. All right. Before we move on to the next step, I did want to bring up this next topic uh, or this uh, cautionary warning. Remember, we used Elmer's glue to glue these models down to these bases. When you add water or any liquid to a Elmer's glue, what'll happen is if you give it enough time, like uh, four or five minutes soaking into that liquid, the Elmer's glue will actually liquefy and it will loosen and you'll be able to... That's why if you put Elmer's glue on your clothing and you put it in the washing machine, it'll come right off because the water liquefies it and it just washes off. Uh, same thing happens on the base. So this dry decks is moist. And so when you put it on your bases, uh, covering that Elmer's glue, if you have not given your Elmer's glue enough time to dry, uh, it will loosen the Elmer's glue. And if you handle the models while the dry decks is on the Elmer's glue, there is a chance you will pop the figure off of the base. So be careful with that. I always handle my figures by the base while I'm waiting for this to dry. All right, now there's also Woodland Scenics creates this additive. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a dye that you can put in your terrain modeling plasters and when you do that you stir it in 
and it changes the color. You can get like a light brown, a dark brown, or whatever, and you could put it in your dry decks so that when you apply the dry decks to the base, you'll actually have a brown color. Now, I don't have that Woodland Scenics here, and I'm not willing to wait. I want to show you the, the way I do it, because if you notice, the black from the way I primed these figures are shining through and they don't have the dry decks on it. I don't want to put the dry decks on top of the base because that would just reinforce the hill that they're on. So I only put the dry decks between the bases so that what I need to do is actually paint the dry decks and the base the same color before I apply any flock. But because this is wet and I just did these, we're not going to be able to continue with these until those dry. But luckily, I have these guys. These are the, these are the militia that I popped off the bases last night. And I dry dexed them earlier this afternoon. So let's move these British guys out of the way. All right, now these are the these are the militia that you remember me popping off the bases last night and I glued them to the the Warlord Games bases already and I applied some dry deck spackling and it is dry. They're solid. Okay, so and you can see the bumps between the bases have all but disappeared. Uh, one one thing will happen if the dry deck has enough moisture in it it will settle. They'll, they'll, it'll like smooth itself out. So even if you, when you apply it, you have a lot of bumps and, and ridges and stuff, it will, not 100%, but it will settle down. And that's good because then it's not, it's not jagged and everything, if that, if that makes any sense at all. All right, the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually paint with brown. I use uh, Apple Barrel. It's cheap. This is like a $2 bottle. It, or maybe it's 3 or $4. But still, look how much is in there. There's 8 ounces. I put it in the middle here because I use so much of it. It's already watered down. I don't have to water it down. And then we take the brown and we apply it to the dry decks. And the base between the feet. Now, if you're going to do like a wintry scenario and you're going to put like snow on the ground, which Princeton is, it does happen in the snow, but I'm still going to put grass on the base. But if you were thinking about doing a snow covered base, don't bother painting the, the spackle. Leave it white. Uh, and just apply your snow flock directly on top of the uh, spackle. Because if you paint brown or black or any other color underneath snow, the snow won't come out its true color. But if you leave white underneath, it will. So now also, if I just wanted to leave some areas white or skip a place here and there, it's no big deal because this is the Battle of Princeton. Or, uh, but I'm not only going to be doing the Battle of Princeton, so, so I'm not going to leave them just white. I'm not only going to do Valley Forge and all that other, you know, wintry battle stuff. These have to be used at like Freeman's Farm and, you know, Bemis Heights and Guilford Courthouse and stuff like that when it's not necessarily any snow on the ground. Yeah, I'm saying don't waste your Vallejo or your Citadel paint or any of those uh, acrylics on your basing. Um, you just don't need to spend that kind of money for paint you're just going to put underneath flock. You know what I mean? I know you do. Now when it comes to painting the sides of the bases, I'm going to have to hold it by the model. Because I don't want to get paint on my hands. 
and then I do always paint the sides of the models. Now sometimes I'll paint the sides of the models green or some other color uh, and I, I usually do that after I flock. But right now I just want to make sure I get all the white off of there. Brown all the way around. Okay. So he and that that um, that paint will dry at various shades, and so what you'll do is you'll have uh, various shades of dirt underneath your flock, which is perfectly fine, because we're getting ready to cover that with flock anyway. All right, let me do these other three, and then we'll be back for the next step. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, um, I've got them all brown, but still wet. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how it looks with the brown on the base, right? So you can actually probably play with a figure like that, but for me, that's not enough. And if you go with just a straight up brown base or a green base or a black base, it takes something away from the model. You got to, once you start putting grass and rock and gravel, it really makes the model look like a little mini diorama. All right, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let this dry and we'll come back with the next step. See you then. All right guys, now the brown has dried and uh, you can see that it is ready to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put uh, Elmer's over the entire base, 100%. And then what I'm going to do is drop a few of these very coarse Talos little rocks on there to give it a little bit of texture. And then I'm going to submerge it into this ballast, right? And this is a brown. You can see it's very similar color. Uh, it'll be disguised and it's going to be the dirt. It's so fine that it's like it's dirt. Once this coat dries, then we go back with a grass flock. Now, I just put Elmer's glue straight onto the base. I don't mix it with water. I have mixed it with water in the past. Um, and that's okay. What I do is I just put quite a bit of Elmer's on there. And then I use a tester's brush to get the Elmers mixed up in all the crevices and cracks of all the feet and between the legs and to the edge of the model. Uh, a two to one ratio or a, a, a one, I'm sorry, a one to one ratio, like one part water, one part Elmer's glue is actually a good mixture. Uh, but don't go any thinner than that. Um, I'm going one to one. I mean, I'm going, I'm going zero to one, really. I'm just going straight Elmer's because I've under, I've come to the understanding that Elmer's is already a watered down glue. It's not like I'm buying straight PVA from like industrial. Okay. I've got it completely Elmersed, right? And I just grab a, a few of these, drop them on. Doesn't matter where they land. They can land in any spot. Okay, doesn't matter where. And then I take the dirt and I put it on. Now, the reason why you do the gravel first, they're bigger. And when you put the gravel on, it's going to sit on the glue directly. And then when you put the gravel, this is so fine, it falls in between the rocks and it glues to all those spots that the rocks are not on. See that? Okay, now I don't shake it off 
a lot of people will just like immediately shake it off. I don't shake it off. I let it sit there for a moment. I'm going to put it in my box and I'm going to let it dry so that the gravel and the ballast will soak down into the Elmer's glue and it will, when the Elmer's dries, it will have a really good grip on the basing material. Okay, let's do a second one just so you can kind of follow along. We got the Elmer's, which also dries clear. So I don't worry about that. Now you can add coloring directly to your Elmer's if you wanted to do that. I personally don't do that. Now you might say, Mr. Everything, you've already done some basing videos in the past, like six years ago. Why are you doing them again? Well, first of all, this is a new basing for my American War of Independence. There are new sizes of bases. Plus, uh, I was showing you the technique of actually taking them off of a base, not just gluing them down onto a base. And I've got a new camera. And the new camera is a lot higher resolution than my old one and it, I got better lighting got a better microphone yeah so this is like an updated version of those older videos but also it has new information in it plus I'm excited about doing some American War of Independence figures okay completely covered now I'm going to take just a just a few of these and I'm going to throw them on there, and it's just going to land where they may. It might bounce off of a rifle or something. See that? Okay, now this one's a little bit more scattered. The rocks are a little bit more scattered than that one because they're clumped in the front. And then sprinkle this on 100%. Just let it, let it get, oh, get my finger off of that corner because I was hiding that glue in the corner, sticking to it actually my finger was. And then everything is completely covered, but I am going to let it sit and dry in the Elmer's. All right, let me get those two done and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got them all glued, graveled, talos, so I've got the dirt down and everything's ready to go. Now I'm letting this dry. It's not going to take long, maybe 15 minutes. And then I'm going to shake them off. But I put them in a cardboard box like this because inevitably there's always a little bit of stones and rocks and stuff that fall off uh, while we're waiting for it to dry. So I'm just going to set those off to the side and I'll be back in about 15 minutes. All right, simple enough. Now the next step is to take these dried bases. Now I, what I do is I take a, my brush and I tap the bottom of them. So if any loose stones are on there, they will just immediately fall off. And you see when I turn it over, a big, a, a big selection of ballast falls off automatically. Like right here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to turn it, and you see it already falls off. And that's the, that's the ballast that most people are shaking off. But when you shake off early, before the glue dries, what happens is you actually shake off or tap off more than you would if you let it sit and dry. Okay, so now these guys are, they got their gravel. They got their dirt. Only thing left is to do a little bit of uh, grass flocking. And then these guys will be done. Let me get ready for that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. We are going to go ahead and put the green grass layer on the bases. And uh, now I'm using the Bosch Micro Scatter. Uh, it's the Midland Green or the uh, Glade Green or whatever that's called. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the stone is that I'm going to put the Elmer's glue on. I'm going to move it around with the brush, but in, but in this case, uh, we're not going to 100% cover everything. We're going to leave uh, these stones that I put on the base exposed so you'll get it that'll add an extra dimension to the model and then I will put some grass in various areas uh, I'm thinking somewhere between 60 and 75 percent of the base will have grass on it Okay, so I just put a random pattern of glue on there, and then I use my brush, my, my glue brush, that's the only thing I ever use this brush for, to spread it around. Get it into any little, between the feet or the legs if I want, uh, if that's something I'm trying to do. Looks like I wanted this whole side covered. Uh, you want mostly grass or mostly whatever you want your main flock to be. If you want your main flock to be dirt, like on a maybe a an Arab ancient Roman figure or something, you like if they're in the deserts of Egypt or something, you might want less grass. You might want more sand. Okay. And then you just take your flock and you just sprinkle it on. And with the glue being as sticky as it is, the flock will stick to the glue. It'll probably also stick to the gravel uh, in that, you know, there's cracks and crevices that it will stick down inside of. That is perfectly okay, because when I go to the shake off and remove process, uh, they'll come, it'll come right off. Okay, so I'm gonna do all of these on camera for you because this process is actually one of the fastest processes. This has a bunch of scattered rocks on it, so I don't want to uh, put too much. I don't want to cover the rocks is what I'm trying to say. Because why bother going through the effort of putting the rocks on if you're just going to cover them up with grass? Now on this, I'm trying to get in between the rocks and not if, okay, like that one rock I completely covered, I'm not going to cry about it. Now I used to do this process with a toothpick, but that was when I was doing 15 millimeter. When I moved, when I grew up and went to 28 millimeters, I uh, realized that a toothpick, I did use a toothpick for a little while, think, you know, because I was staying with what I knew, but it wound up just being unmanageable.
Yeah, and then just sprinkle it on. I know there are some terrain builders that will put like a dark coat of green. They'll sprinkle that on first in a small spot, kind of like what I do with the stones. And then they'll go with the light green later uh, to create the same type of effect that I'm doing with the stones, but they use like different shades of grass. And remember, I don't have to actually get it anywhere. I could, I'm just gradually putting it all over. And then I'm going to use the brush to put it in places that I want it in. And it doesn't have to go to the edge because you want some of that gravelly rock to kind of shine through every now and then too. You want there to be dirt, grass, and gravel. Uh, not just one. You want to have a, a three-tiered texture. Uh, you could do it in other ways like some people will take little clump foliage and they'll add it instead of the boulders or they'll add it in in addition to the boulders some people like i've seen done with like tall reed grass or even static grass static grass was um and still is a good method to base uh bases. I just find static grass to be a little bit unmanageable. Uh, it gets everywhere. The fans blow it everywhere. It's really lightweight and yeah, it goes everywhere. So I use this Bosch Micro Scatter, uh, which is, it's a very fine, uh, like grass shaped uh, I think it's sawdust. It's colored sawdust. And it's heavier. It doesn't blow around everywhere in the wind. And it doesn't stick to my hands when I sprinkle it like the static grass. It's exactly that. It has static cling to it. And some of it stands up. Some of it lays down. Some of it doesn't even soak into the uh, the glue and so what winds up happening is you have these splotches in your static grass and I don't know I've I've moved away from static grass as a flocking material um, what kind of turned me on onto this type of flock the uh, the wood flock was uh, Games Workshop actually. Games Workshop has uh, flock and then they have then they have grass. And the flock that I have from Games Workshop was super micro, what do they call it, scatter. It looked exactly like uh, scatter. So I went looking around and it was, I was having a hard time finding the Games Workshop scatter. Uh, so I was looking for alternatives you know, to it. And I found this Bosch micro scatter and it's mainly for railroads, but anything you use for a railroad can definitely be used for miniature figures. That's, that's, that's a guarantee. And, uh, it also is way cheaper and I think it works just as well. All right. So let's scatter this micro scatter. You notice I, I move the base, I rotate it 90 degrees each time I sprinkle because it goes down in between all the figures and then 
This way, it's coming at the figures and all the glue from every angle. That way it gets in between the legs and things like that. So then I put it in my box, because you know what, uh, just in case, just to organize it right there. And then we're going to let that dry for about 15 minutes. And once it's done, we're going to come shake it off, and then I'll give you the final look of the models. All right, I'll see you in about 15 minutes. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and knock these off. So what we're going to do is we're going to, just like what we did with this, the stones, we just take our base, and it looks great like that with fully covered in green, but it just doesn't look right. So we take it. You saw all the grass fall. I do it again. I tap it with my really heavy-duty brush here. I tap it, let it fall, and then maybe just a little bit, I clean the models off of the grass, right? All right, so you've got some stones, you've got some grass. This might be a little excessive on the grass. Remember I said 60 to 70? This almost looks like an 80 to 90%, okay? I overdo it. I always overdo it. I have to really dial myself back to try to get only to 60 to 70 percent. Oh, he's got grass in his lapels. Because when I turn it over, the grass falls right into the miniatures uh, where the arms and the body meet. So you got to clean all that out. Okay, see that's almost 100% covered in grass. The only thing you see is that rock, and maybe a little sand there, maybe a little sand behind his foot. Still looks good though. Okay, get some grass off that drum. Remember this guy? With all the gravel in the front? Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let me put all this up and we'll get a little money shot on this thing so you get to see what it looks like. All right, now this is the whole unit sitting out um, in its splendor. Let's go ahead and switch it to like a march column. Remember what I do with the muskets? I put it in between so it wouldn't interfere with any other models. So there's your march column. Let's go ahead and put it in a formation that this unit can't assume. <laughs> that's, that's column. Okay. So, but we'll do it anyway, just to make, just so you can see it. But this unit would normally be in line. Uh, but I do want to get up s close and personal with these models. So let's go ahead and pull these up close, just so you can kind of see what they look like. All right, I got this pretty much as close as I can get it. Now, notice the grass. Look at the grass. It looks like grass. And then you got your stones, and you got your dirt underneath the grass. Uh, That's awesome. Now let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to show, show you how it looks. To me, that, okay, look at those rocks right there. Okay, I don't know, the lighting. See those rocks down inside there? I think that looks really good. Oh, got some grass on his hat. You know what happened? That was when I grabbed, when I had a little bit of glue on my hand and I was holding the model like this. I bet you some grass got on there. So all I gotta do is go in there with my Mark I grass adjusting tool. And get rid of it. There we go, it's gone. Yeah. Looking good. Let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, I really, really, really like this Bosch micro scatter. I think it's perfect for this scale. You got the rocks. And they make it in different colors, like uh, Glade, which has some little bit of red flakes mixed in. They also have a darker green. Uh, I 
I could get multiple different types and every unit put something a little bit different just to kind of differentiate who they are. But uh, I like this. Thanks for coming out and watching me rebase all my uh, militia figures here. I am going to be rebasing all my AWI figures. Uh, and I'm going to be building a uh, both forces, the uh, Continentals and the British, for the Battle of Princeton. Well, but basically, I'm taking my Freeman Farm figures and I'm converting them to the Warlord Games Black Powder bases. And then I'm also going to be getting some more figures that will... Uh, fill out my army for the Battle of Princeton. Uh, I'm going to be updating you a couple of times a week on where my progress is on that. Uh, tonight I plan to do another video uh, with the actual start, like the episode one of my Princeton project. Uh, this was just kind of like a teaser of my Princeton project. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this video. And I'll see you in the next one.